<laughs> hmm? Granddad never mentioned that there were men as dark as this. Wow, look at that nose. He's just like a pig. He's a monster! Hi! In today's episode, I'm joined by Abigail of the Sorry Mom and Dad podcast. I wanted to thank you for joining me today and give you the opportunity to share more information about your podcast, so go ahead. Thank you. Um, so we started Sorry Mom and Dad around July, and we, re me and my two co-hosts, we wanted to um, start a podcast that was focused on um you know sex dating and like modern struggles of <laughs> dating especially um in a, the big city of los angeles so um we wanted to give like that perspective from um asian american millennials as like especially first generation asians um from our views and so every week we like to focus on a new topic that deals with that and we like to focus on the asian american experience as well okay um and one of the podcast one of the episodes in your podcast discussed the issue okay. of yellow fever can you explain what that is <laughs> um, yellow fever is basically when you um take the idea of um, the other person being Asian and focusing completely on nothing else. It's like, oh, I like them because they're Asian or the first thing that you notice about them is that they're Asian. And so you try to change yourself in a way to where you can appeal to the Asian American <laughs> or the Asian in general because you fetishize their culture, you fetishize their features and you completely disregard any other attributes about them, except for the fact that they're Asian. Okay. And mm -hmm. is there a difference between like yellow fever or a preference for Asian women, or is that like the same thing? Um, it's, it's okay to have a preference, I can say that. But if you're going to force yourself into like learning a language just because the other person you're interested in is Asian, or um, you have to make the whole relationship, this whole concept, just because they're Asian, that's completely different than saying, oh, you know, I have had good experience dating Asian women. So I like have this idea of like preference wise, like, okay, she's like this, she's like that. But there's, a, <laughs> there's like a difference between saying, oh, I like Asians because they're small, petite, and submissive, than saying, oh, I like Asian women because um, I'm used to dating that type of person or I'm interested in dating that type of person. At least that's what we were talking about when we were um, discussing our podcast. So if you like Asian women because of the stereotypes that are usually associated yeah. with Asian women in the media, that's the problem. Yes, that is a huge issue. It's like, okay, Asian woman submissive automatically. It's like, no, there's a lot of outspoken Asian women out there and you can't just like them because of those um, perceived notions and stereotypes associated with Asian women that, you know, like Westerners have, um, you know, grown to perpetuate in our society. Okay. Um, can you give me some examples that you've seen of Asian women being dehumanized or objectified by, by oh, men God. yeah so i have a personal i have a personal story um i was dating this um white guy i think back in 2015 and um i didn't know that i was like the first asian girl that he had ever dated so um he would say things to me like oh like i miss you um i miss your oriental self and i'm like okay <laughs> Why did you call me Oriental? First of all, that's a dehumanizing like um, word because um, you know it's very bad connotation with East Asia. I'm not even East Asian. Like I'm, I'm like Pacific Islander, I guess, since I'm Filipino. I'm like you can't just throw around the word Oriental like that. And um, he would be like, "Oh, you're supposed to do what I'm supposed to, what I say because you know, isn't that how you're supposed to be like?" And I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like. Asian women, you know, they're like submissive to the guys. And I'm like, where did you get that idea from? And so I just knew it was toxic from that point. Okay. So that's my personal experience with that. Can I just ask, was he conservative? Like usually like conservative? No. Oh. He wasn't. It was weird. 
And I've had a lot of guys who, like, when I go on dates with them who are not Asian, they'll be like, oh, I've always wanted to be with an Asian girl. And uh, why is that the first thing that you'll, you'll tell me? It's really weird. So I'm just like, so do you only like me because I'm Asian? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it throws me off completely. Um, mm -hmm. If you realize that a guy that you were seeing had a preference for Asian women, would that be an automatic deal breaker? Actually, it would be because it's like, okay, you only like me for my ethnicity then, rather than like knowing, wanting to get to know me first, if anything. Like, I want a guy to like me for who I am, then get to want to be interested in my culture as we get to know each other. Okay. Um, okay. So, I listened to the podcast, and there were okay. some things that you listed um, on okay. how to not approach Asian women you want to shoot your shot at. I'm going to just... <laughs> List them. Um, don't mention how much you like Asian food. Don't mention that you love online, yeah. uh, online anime or Asian dramas or Asian languages. Mm -hmm. um, don't really talk about how many Asian countries you've been to, and don't mention yeah. race at all. Um, is that it, or do you have any other things that you would add to that? I think me and my co-host pretty much hit the list on that. Um, especially with the whole anime thing. Um, I don't mind someone who loves anime. I personally love anime, but if you're going to be like, oh, like, I learned Japanese because I just love um, Japan and, like, I can list, like, three basic words from um, this anime and, like, they automatically think that they're part of the Japanese culture. I don't know, that kind of bothers me or <laughs> if I'm trying to date someone. <laughs> Like, we can just enjoy the show together without them having to point out, like, all the Japanese stuff that goes on with it. It's, like, kind of awkward. And I did date a guy in college that said that Panda Express was his favorite Chinese food. So, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and another thing is that, like, for example, like, somebody, from your perspective, I would assume, like, if you're saying that you like Asian culture, like there's different types. So like anime is Japanese. And if you assume that a Chinese person would be into that, there's that conflict between the Chinese and the Japanese. So you probably don't want to say that. Um, and you should understand the difference between like Chinese and Japanese, for example. Um, so, um, but moving on to the next question, um, would you consider a preference for a different race of women such as black, white, or Hispanic equally as problematic as a preference for Asian women? I do, especially whenever um, I know that some Asian women, they do fetishize um, on like black men sometimes. And um, I think it's good to have a preference, but I see sometimes whenever they fetishize like black men, they're just like, it's, it can be kind of disturbing sometimes. It's because it's the same thing as fetishizing like um, Asian women as well as like, oh, I like black men because of this stereotype or this stereotype or this stereotype and it's just the same thing with um other races fetishizing like any other race honestly in my opinion but. okay um that was kind of getting into my next question but it might seem redundant but i'll ask anyways is it okay for asian women to have a racial preference in a man or is that a problem i just believe like uh i think what we talked about in the podcast is like any racial preference um or fetishization of like any other culture or any other race is a little messed up i think because we should avoid the fact that you're only dating someone just because they're this race or that race okay. but uh, yeah it's not just for us asian women but also for any other race okay. and mm -hmm. one thing that i've seen is yeah. like asian women usually gravitating to white guys but you said that they mm -hmm gravitate to black guys and what you see is uh, yeah. is it white or black from what you see i'm not sure <laughs> yeah well from my personal like perspective here in los angeles a lot of asian females tend to go for or black men yeah but back when i lived in texas a lot of asian women dated white men okay. so it's i don't know that's what i've just seen here okay. but i mean I'm I'm totally cool with like interracial dating. Like um, my friends interracially date doesn't really matter, but it's just how you go about it. It's like 
you you should be dating someone because you like them as a person as opposed to liking them just because of their race. Okay. And the reason why I keep hammering on this particular subject is because I usually see an inconsistency is that, which I don't see yeah. here, yeah. is that Asian women who usually say it's not okay to have a racial preference for Asian women usually only date white guys. And that's not something that you're really seeing or is really like, you know, you agree with is, a, is like, it's not hypocritical to do that. That's a problem on both sides, which is something I don't usually hear, but it's nice to hear that consistency. Um, but nevertheless, I did want to bring this up and I did hear in the podcast that some of you had dated black guys before, but I did want to bring up this example because it bothered me. Uh, do you know Janine Mai? I do not know who she is. She is a host of the daytime show, or one of the hosts on the daytime talk show, The Real. Um, okay. And I think she's, well, she is Asian. I'm not sure which race, but she is Asian. And in 2014, she said the following about her dating preferences. Love black guys, but for me, dark meat on the side, white keeps me mean and lean. You know, that's why I married a white man. That's what I like. Um, oh. okay. What are your thoughts about that? Oh, man. Um that's a little like wow i did not hear anything like that before but that's um well my opinion on that is she should have just kept that to herself all uh, right <laughs> um she said white meat keeps her lean love black guys but for me dark meat on the side white keeps me mean and lean you know that's why i married a white man that's what i like okay now that's just it's a little fucked up, but <laughs> I really don't know what to say about that, except that's a very uncomfortable statement <laughs> to put out publicly, honestly. Yeah. How, uh, how long ago was that? 2014. 2014. Uh, it's on YouTube. Okay, let's see. I'll put a link in the description. Oh, yeah, it's on YouTube. Um, okay, I'll, I'll probably check that out. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think, I think regardless, you know, um, Statements like that coming from any race is pretty disturbing. I don't think we should be saying those things like um, dark meat on the side. What does that even mean? I just I want to know. <laughs> so the, way, the way I interpret that is that like black is good enough for like boyfriend material, but not enough to marry. Like white is the first choice. Black is the second choice. That's pretty racially charged right there, in my opinion. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't. I'm yeah. not about it. <laughs> okay. Um, so here, here's, here's the next part about Janice's story. At that time, she was married to Freddie Hartis, who is a white guy. And okay. they recently got divorced, but now she's dating Young Jeezy, who is a black rapper who's pretty successful. Um, okay. Which doesn't seem like it's a big deal, but like me reading into that, I see, particularly because I see white male, Asian female all the time, at least in New York, is yeah. that like even when Asian women do date men of color there's like a slight it's like janima in her case she's 40 she's one date him then after when she's young dating a white guy um and the black guy has to still be successful at a certain level of status i don't know who freddie ortiz was before i looked her up uh or looked him up so I, I i don't think you may have seen that but like i'll ask anyways do you feel as though like for some asian women there, there is that sense of like even when they do date men of color that there's a certain standard or a certain slight that those men of color may receive from Asian women? Well, I can't speak personally for all Asian women, but um, I guess from my perspective, I think it's with anyone, anyone, everyone has their own personal standards. So um, like if you're looking for someone who has success, then that could drive you to be, um, you know, willing to date them, be in a relationship with them and all that. But if this personal conflict comes in where it's like, oh, I am attracted to this person, um, but they're like white or black or whatever, um, you know, it's fine, but do, are they at a level of success that, um, that I want them to be at for me to be willing to be in a relationship or date them or something? You yeah. Know? It's, yeah. It's like that's no better from my perspective, that's like no better than not wanting to date a man of color at all. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and I've seen that, which is why I talk about this particular perspective because, and this is gonna get to my last point, I might as well just bring it up. Mm -hmm. um, let's say you are a man of color who likes Asian women and knows that Asian women get very defensive about that. 
So like it is a deal breaker, right? But they feel as though they, have, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I'm saying like I've been with men that have that mindset as well. Yeah. So they feel as though they're not the first choice. And they try to do things so over, like they overexert themselves. They try to learn about Asian culture, which is a turn off even more because they, some Asian women don't want that. Um, then they hear like a list of demands and they feel as though they have to put up with those demands because they're not the desired ones. They can't make a list of demands, obviously. Um, then they hear those things like dark meat on the side or like, and I will mention this in the podcast. I think you mentioned this, uh, one of you mentioned that in terms of like having these fetishes, it seems it sometimes works in our favor if you're an influencer and profiting off of it. So like my point being is that from the perspective of somebody who sees who's a man of color, who knows he's not the most desirable for Asian women, they have to kind of like they feel as though they're being exploited, though they have to overexert themselves. And even when they are getting what they want, it doesn't feel as though they're the number one choice so that the Asian woman knows that they have more power in the relationship because of that, what would you say to a guy who has that feeling or has resentment based off of that? I just feel like um, you should just avoid um, anyone who makes you feel lesser than what you feel like that you are. And, you know, if you do end up finding like an Asian woman that interests you, she'll let you in and she'll want you to start absorbing her culture rather than have you feel like you need to force yourself to do that. Okay. So just move on to the next person. It's not. Exactly. It's like, don't ever feel like you need to force yourself to um, fight for another girl like that. Yeah. Okay. It just, fe- the reason why I went into all that, it just seems like in many cases there's a no win situation. Even if the person is dating a man of color like Janine Mai, it just, it feels like something's off. And you mentioned before that like, oh, yeah. you know, you've seen that dynamic. So that's why I wanted to bring that up. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. So those are all my questions. I don't know if you had anything else to add, but uh, I wanted to thank you for at least answering questions from my perspective. Um, and thank you for your time. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me today. Sorry, I'm a little sick. I just started a cold. So okay. <laughs> I've been sniffling kind of. 